Hello, flutes. Today, we're going to be talking about the upper range of the flute. Uh, we're going to go from our high D all the way up to our high B natural. Now, as we play these high notes, there are some things to remember. Um, air direction, air speed, and also what our mouth and throat are doing to help the sound come out. So we're first going to start with the D. I'm raising my finger extra high so you can see that unlike our middle D in the staff, that our pinky is down between that middle D and our high D. Also, you'll notice that the right hand does this pendulum effect as we go from our low to high D. The pinky goes down, but the rest of the fingers pop up. Also, with our airspeed, if you've been able to get both of those out with me, you may have noticed that you've had to change your airspeed and make it faster to get our high D to come out. So when we're doing this change here, we're also increasing our airspeed and narrowing our lips. So the aperture of our lips is the size of the hole that the air is coming through. And we're narrowing that as we play the high notes in order to help that airspeed kick up in pace. And also, our air direction is going to be going from a little bit down to more even. So, this is approximately how I'm aiming the air. May not seem like a huge difference but it can make a huge difference in the sound of our notes. I'm gonna play it now, but I'm gonna do it without adjusting the direction of the air and seeing what happens under those circumstances. You hear the difference in that D, it sounds very dull, lifeless, without color. Sometimes it sounds like me without caffeine. Um, so between the low and the D, high D, here we go, or middle D. So changing that direction just a little bit. Okay, let me think about what my throat is doing as I'm playing these to get them out. So if we want a deep and projecting D sound that isn't very zingy and like in your face, we're also going to be wanting to open up the back of our mouth. So with our low notes, we're opening our throat. And here I'm really feeling an opening in the back of my mouth to get that more uh, mellow high D. couple of ways you can think about that. One is by opening that throat. Another one is by feeling the space between your molars and your back teeth as if you had a jawbreaker in there or, I don't know, a bouncy ball, but why would you put that in your mouth? That's just weird. Okay, now we're going to go on to our next note. So our E flat in the middle register is with first finger up. That's the pick the nose fingering. As we go up to that higher octave. We're going to go from what I call the fox hand. It's the fox hand. To um, fully down on the left hand. So we're making this movement here. 
waving to you with my two fingers on the outside. So there I am also using um, the opening of the back of the throat and the teeth with that space to get that full sound. Also narrow, narrowing the aperture of the lips, which is the hole that the air comes through, narrowing that to help increase the airspeed. And of course, you are going to be supporting that with your diaphragm as well. Okay, now let's go on to our E-naturals. So we have our low E natural, and we have our ring finger up on the right hand, ring finger up. So that's our low one. So you may have been able to see that it is my third finger or the ring finger on my left hand that lifted up to help that higher E natural come up. Okay, if I forget about the open throat or the direction that I'm pointing my air between the two, remember we're doing this sort of movement between the two notes, it's going to come out more like this. And hopefully, my headphone mic can pick that up. So the difference between those sounds is when I did it just then, the sound was a whole lot less full of life. It's like you're tired. It's like you're not feeling it. Uh, the um, there was little buzziness on my lower note because I wasn't placing the notes exactly with um, the positioning of the air and with how narrow or open my lips were for each note. Hopefully you can hear the difference on the recording there. So do remember those things. Air direction is very important as we get into the upper range as well as when we're playing in the lower range. Okay, now we're going to do our F in the mid register. Sorry, I did my low one first, so I guess we'll do all three. You may have noticed here that the finger that's coming up is our middle finger. Now, I'm sure you can think of a way to remember that fingering, right? <laughs> so here's the low, mid to upper. Our air direction is going from down to more mid, almost straight across as we get that high F. So that's our Fs. Let's do that one more time. Okay, that is our F, which means our next note up is our F sharp or our G flat. Now, if we're in our mid or lower range, that is going to be fingered like this. our low and our mid. That last one, you may have been able to hear a difference on that note, and that is because I was fingering that F sharp incorrectly. That high F sharp, once again, needs our middle finger to vent to help that note to come out with its full and um, most 
glorious sound. So the difference from our mid to high F, once again, is that middle finger. Okay, that is our F in all three registers that we're able to play on our flute. Next up would be our G. So normal G and low G have the same fingering with one, two, and three, and thumb on the back down. do feel the lower one back further in my head or my throat and that middle one more out uh, as I play it. As we get to that high G, we're going to want to make sure to take our thumb off and our thumb is venting on this note. So that is our G in all three octaves that we're able to play on the flute. Okay, up next will be the A flat or the G sharp. So our A flat and our lower range uses this pinky key here on our left hand. Our right hand, we just have our supportive pinky down. I'm going to exaggerate the fingering this time. Really watch closely and see if you can pick up on the venting keys for this high A flat or G sharp. It's kind of hard for me to get in the habit of picking those fingers up because when you're practicing at home, you don't necessarily want your fingers to be as far away from the keys as possible but I'm doing it in this case to help you see what's going on. On our high A flat, we're going to be venting with our thumb and with our first finger. So we can pick that nose and we can suck our thumb, I guess. I don't know why this is so juvenile, but apparently it is. <laughs> okay, so here's our low, mid, and high. Let's do that again. Here we go. Low. Mid. And high. So remember those three things. Here is where some of you may really start struggling to get the notes to speak in the upper range. So remember, increase your airspeed. Keep your um, abdominal muscles engaged. Make sure that 64 pack is rippling. And um, increase that airspeed. Decrease the hole. Bring that airstream up. Okay, that was our A flat or G sharp in all three octaves that are commonly played in the flute. Okay, up next is going to be our A natural. So once again, in our middle and lower ranges, our A natural, A normal, just has thumb and first two fingers plus the pinky support. So that's the mid and lower. Now I'm going to play that high one for you. So hopefully you caught on that once again, our vent finger is our first one. 
So we could pick that nose. We're not going to because spreading germs, right? Okay, so it's that, oh, and I forgot to mention, hopefully some of you saw that I was being sneaky, but I also snuck that first finger down. So it's kind of like a hybrid of your F, you're bringing that first finger down as well. But when you're playing that high A, your first finger is gonna be down as well. So in summary, thumb, second finger here, first finger on your right hand. So that is the A in all three registers that the flute plays. Okay, up next will be the B flat or the A sharp. But who likes A sharps? String players? I mean, really. Okay, so our low B flat, which really isn't all that low for us if you think about it. Then our mid B flat. And then we're going to actually need the help of our trill keys again on this one. So the trill keys are these two small keys right here that you can see. Depending on the fingering that we're going to play, you can use a variety of fingerings to cover that. But in this case, for our high B flat, we're going to want to use our first finger to cover this one. And because our first finger is being used, we're going to want to use that second finger on our trill key here. So we also have the pick the nose finger up right there in the left hand. Our thumb is still on and supporting. So from our low octave, the change is first finger up, plop, and trill key down. So to get that high B flat out, you're really going to have to blow that air. Exaggerate it if you need to. See if you can even pop up to some other note or crack the note. If you can crack it, then you've got enough air to play that high B flat. I'm overblowing it there so you can hear it. I can't crack it. But if you're giving that overblown sound when you're playing, my mic probably backed off as I was playing. That was probably like, whoa, what are you doing to me? Um, but if you're getting that overblown sound, then that's an indication that you can back off on your air just a little bit. Until you get that nice, full, resonant, but very high note. <laughs> And speaking of very high notes, my uh, family's dog was just out on the outside looking at me and was like, what the heck are you doing with those high notes? Apparently, it's a dog whistle when we get that high. Uh, by the way, his name is Gurgi, like uh, the Black Cauldron munchings and crunchings. Okay, so... Now, we're going to try one more. <laughs> I know some of you may be like, Mr. Wendell, what are you doing to me? Uh, just hang in there. Here is the last commonly played um, note for flutes. I mean, you will run into Cs as you get into more advanced music, but they really don't play them that often, and composers really shouldn't write for that high C unless they know exactly what they want to get, which is a high note that's probably going to be sharp and very piercing. If they want that, by all means, write it. But if you want a double P, high C, I mean, score it for the piccolo. Okay, so our B in our lower range 
has our thumb in our first finger, plus that supportive pinky here. So as we go between the octaves, we're remembering to change the direction that our air is going, also remembering to narrow our lips and increase our airspeed. Okay, now we're also gonna need the help of some trill keys in order to play our high B natural. Let's see. I forgot my ring finger there for a second. So our uh, high B is different from our lower Bs because we're gonna place our third finger down here. We're also gonna be playing with our second trill key here. We're gonna be using our ring finger to get that trill key pressed. Now, as a flute player, you could work all day to get the most beautiful sound that you possibly can on that note. It is much more challenging once you get to that B natural to achieve a pure, full sound without having it sound edgy or in your face, those sort of things. So let's try low, middle, high. Here we go. Again, remember that those are the two fingers coming down. Our third finger, so you know we've got the lovely gesture going on there. Plus, we also have our ring finger playing that second trill key. On that last one, hopefully the mic was able to pick it up. You really concentrated on opening up in the back of my mouth and throat to help that note resonate much more mellow and less. Rah! Okay, so that is all of our high or upper notes for the flutes that we usually do not get to work on in class. So. Some tips and tricks that you can remember as you are going low to high is that airspeed increases. Our aperture right here goes from bigger to smaller. We change the direction of our air from lower to mid-range to upper range. Of course, we're gonna be supporting with our six packs down here. And a lot of the upper notes also have a vent finger or maybe for a few of them, a few bent fingers that come up and make them different from the lower notes. So my flute peeps, I hope this video was helpful for you in exploring the upper range of your flute. Please stay healthy and hopefully I'll get to see you in person soon.